so well hello everyone and <laughs> uh i'm here today with some absolutely wonderful ladies who are both marine biologists or marine conservationist conservationist is that even a word conservationist <laughs> And uh, and also to happen to be really successful YouTubers, so I wanted to. I mean, you're all more successful than I am. So as far as I'm concerned, you're very successful. <laughs> so I I really wanted to bring you all together today, uh, so we could talk a bit about science communication and and the world of YouTube as well. So you know stuff like why did you decide to start a YouTube channel and just talk about it. I mean, I I find myself that I've ran into a whole lot of questions um, and I thought it'd be nice to talk about that with you ladies. So before we keep going, could you please introduce yourself and your YouTube channel as well so that the, the li listeners could uh, potentially go visit them? Uh, Chantel, you're first. All right, hi everybody, my name is Chantelle. I have a YouTube channel called Telly's Marine Tales. Um, I'm a marine biologist, I'm busy with my postdoc, so I've kind of done the whole academia route in marine biology, so my channel talks about what it's like to be a marine biologist, what it's like to be in academia, um, a little bit about fun things in the ocean and travel vlogs and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, check it out if you're interested, and thanks, Marine, for having us. No worries. Maria. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Maria. And thank you, Maureen, for having this conversation and inviting all of us. Um, I have I also have a channel called CN Me Marine Stuff with Maria, where I just talk and share things related to the ocean in any ways. I sometimes post vlogs or just some scientific videos or gameplays with Maureen biology related video games, anything related to the sea really. Um, I've just finished my PhD around two months ago and I'm currently uh, unemployed. Congratulations. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. <laughs> I know it's difficult to be unemployed. <laughs> unemployed. <laughs> um, but um, yes, I'm working a bit on doing science communication online and uh, I specialized in microbial oceanography during my PhD, and uh, that's it. I'm looking forward for this conversation. Yes. And how about you, Kat? The marine I, I conservationist. Know. Yes, I'm the difficult word. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm Kat. I'm vegan diver Kat on um, YouTube and most of the places and I also run a podcast called Ocean Pancake and basically I do all things ocean conservation. I'm not a marine biologist like these ladies but I did study science and have worked a lot as a diving instructor and in the field of trying to protect our oceans. So if you're interested in anything to do with sustainability, conservation, um, some marine science then uh, yeah definitely come check out my channel or podcast where I talk to some really amazing people Maria is one of them, all about uh, issues our oceans are facing and how we can help them as individuals. I got to get these other ladies on there <laughs> next time. We'll, 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 we'll organize it. <laughs> yeah, cool. Thank you girls for, for these, for, for, well, for joining me today. And um, I think what I had in mind is that I wanted us to just have a kind of a conversation. So I'll, I'll ask a bunch of questions, but as opposed to, you know, you systematically answering the questions, we can just uh, we can just go all over the place and and chat about this. So uh, feel free to speak your mind. Um, and and I think one of the first thing that I was interested in is the reasons why you started a YouTube channel because you all have very different contents in a way. Um, and uh, and because also I ask myself that question all the time and I, I'm not sure I still have an answer to it. <laughs> so I thought that maybe you could help me by answering that. Um, yeah, I mean, is there, Maria, you started, I think, you, are you the first one who started or is it you, Ke or maybe Telly? I don't know, actually. I think we all kind of started at the same time, actually. Around 2015, 16? Like yeah. Oh no, then you started earlier than I think I started 2017. Mm. I've, I've been wanting to start a channel for 
since I was like 11. <laughs> oh, really? I've, I've been, yeah, I've been a massive YouTuber my whole life. And I, I always wanted to be those cool people in front of a camera telling stories and stuff. But uh, any video I ever made, I quickly deleted. I can safely and, uh, tell you that YouTube did not exist when I was 11. <laughs> uh -huh. Me neither. It makes me uh, feel pretty old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it just started. Because it started in what, like 2007 or something? I might have been 13. I don't know. But yeah. I was always like, I don't want to be, you know, cool. <laughs> so, um, so is that why I'm still on that quest? Channel? <laughs> well, like when, when I became an adult, um, I was like, I actually have things to say. You know, well, as a teenager, I filmed nonsense videos. Um, after being a diving instructor for a while, I was like, there's a lot of things that the general public should know about the oceans and how to protect them. So I kind of wanted to share that a bit more than just the students in my classroom because I really loved teaching. So I was like, I'll just put it on the internet. Um, and yeah. I, I don't think there were many oceany channels back then. Were, were there? No. I don't know. So there, there still aren't many, actually. Yeah. Except, mm. That's Except compared to other fields. Uh, my yeah. channel. So I was, I was busy with, I think I was in my first year of my PhD, and um, I was doing a correspondence base from home, so I didn't have a lab to go into or an office or anything like that. So I was kind of feeling a bit lonely in a sense. I didn't have a marine community. So I was like, well, I'll find one on YouTube. I want to go on YouTube and, and see what other people's journey as a marine biologist PhD was like. And I couldn't find anything online. There was hardly, you know, there was nothing. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll do it, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder if you started before, before Maria, actually. I, I don't know... Because Maria, you're the first one that I kind of looked up and started following when you had like 10 YouTube, YouTube followers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're a OG subscriber. Yeah, so am I. OG, maybe oh, yeah, you're, I remember. Yes. <laughs> no, um, but there was, uh, you know, SciAll.org sci, sci from Mike Gill. He, oh, he right. was the yeah, first. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's true. I remember... I think he was the first marine biology channel that I but saw. It's called sci for all right? I think sci -all .org is or the sci website, all. and yeah. it was the name of the channel for a while. Yeah, it was a really good channel, and then he, he probably got busy with life, and he doesn't... Yeah. But he's back. Now they're doing, like, he... I think he outsourced some episodes to other people, to other scientists, which is also cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so... Um, I started my YouTube channel, um, I was actually never much into YouTube before I started my YouTube channel. Uh, I used to watch, I started getting more into YouTube because of my boyfriend actually, because he's a, he used to watch all these tech videos and science videos and all these things. And he kind of pulled me into that. And when I was in Vienna, I started feeling very disconnected. Yeah, I started being very focused only on my very spe specialized research. When you and started I felt very, PhD? When I started my PhD. Yeah. And I felt very disconnected from, I don't know, contact with the public. I, I cannot really explain, but I started mm -hmm. looking up things to do in science communication in Vienna, but most of them required a very good level of German, which I didn't have. And so my boyfriend said, start a YouTube channel. He doesn't even remember that. I think he might have been joking, but I took it seriously. <laughs> it was like, and I started so it. I bought it. <laughs> and now he regrets it. Because <laughs> he's like, and get and out of this room. I'm going to make a video. <laughs> yeah. Let me put up the filming setup. <laughs> More or less. It's all now in our room. So it's even. <laughs> I, I banished my, my partner to his office, the, like the second, bed, the second bedroom. I said, I'm recording today. Yeah, you're not allowed to come out. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Life of a YouTuber. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I'm like stuck in this minuscule bedroom that is not particularly visually pleasing, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so that's more or less why I started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. For me, it was, uh, it was, I guess it was also a little bit the same. Like, I felt like I had a, I had something I really wanted to communicate because I, at the time as I was working in a, in a lab where we were looking at uh, plastic, well, we were looking at the plastic that had been ingested by seabirds. 
and I was dissecting all these seabird stomachs all all day long, and I just I would see so much so much plastic and oh, it was the smell. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Oh, I mean, wow. yeah it's uh it's quite it's quite an experience and it was just like i it was so mind-blowingly visual it mm. really was and the amount of plastic because i think at first i was like ah oh, these birds were caught in greenland like there's not gonna be anything in there might maybe one or two pieces and they were just fucking exploding did with... you film this yeah. Can you imagine just a video of like just seabird after seabird? It's no. Graphic, but just like <laughs> yeah, YouTube wouldn't like that. Guys. Ah, YouTube, I whatever. Would. I mean, yeah, <laughs> that's what makes me upset about YouTube sometimes, to be honest. Um, but uh, I, I didn't. I think that was before, just before I started the channel. Like I, I took a lot of pictures, and then I was just like, I need to, I need to show this to the world. <laughs> So then I made, like, I start, I think my first video was about, or my second was about, like, plastic ingestion in seabirds. And, um, but then the sad thing is I realized that the only people who watched the videos were my friends and my mom. <laughs> so I was like, well, they that's already normal. know. <laughs> that's normal. Everyone starts like that. Yeah. So, oh, I didn't even tell my friends. So I was like... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So you're always that's so true. That's, like, that's true. I still am. I still am. People like me. They're like, "Oh, you have a YouTube channel." I'm like, no, I don't. I don't. No, I don't. It's a silly. It's it's a tricky path to to walk because I find that especially if you you want to be talking about things that are somewhat professional, like research or or various marine biology related topics, and then sometimes you want to be you know you want to go a bit off course and I don't know like play video games or whatever and. Uh, you like i don't know it, I, I find it tricky because like how do you how do you decide what you're going to make your videos about if you if you have this this in your mind like if you're constantly thinking well from a professional standpoint like how is this going to affect my career is you know my next boss going to watch this before hiring me and think uh no thanks <laughs> yeah but you know for i think also like if uh, someone doesn't hire me because I play video games in the internet, do I really want that person as a boss? I mean, what am I? I'm just trying to entertain people while talking about the ocean. I don't see how that should be a reason for someone to not hire me. And if they do not hire me because of that, then maybe I dodged a bullet because uh, uh, I think we should also try to innovate how we share mm. science. So that's yeah. what I try to think. Like, yeah, if, I think if that's the reason. Quite, I think it would be quite a rare scenario where people would look at you and say, oh, you're doing science communication. We don't want you. Like, I think science is slowly but surely moving in the direction of where science communication is becoming much more important. And as you said, Mar like uh, Maria, how we have to innovate because the old way of doing it where you just put a blog on the internet and leave it there, it's not really good science communication. You're not really making a huge difference. So trying to figure out ways where you can be both entertaining while throwing in a bit of science communication, I think that's a way forward. And I think a lot of potential employees would, would recognize that and appreciate it. I think uh, similarly with all the like with the trends that I know Maria and I have like hopped onto, which is like reacting to shark attack scenes or scuba diving scenes or various ocean scenes. That's the perfect combination of like entertainment where you're doing that YouTube trend of reacting to stuff. But whenever I watch Maria's, I learn so much. I'm like, oh, it's really interesting. So I, I also try and like educate people about various things. Some of those movies, though, geez, <laughs> come on. <laughs> I hate shock movies. They're the worst things ever made. <laughs> so many people ask me to review Sharknado, but where do I even start? Like, I do I have to explain that yeah. tomatoes made of sharks don't exist? <laughs> should, we, should we do that together? Because that'd be hilarious. Just oh call us God, and yeah. watch it. Just be I like, actually do it. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, actually, that would be pretty fun. Maria, you mentioned something that I kind of wanted that I, that that I wanted to pick up on, and that uh, I think is interesting to elaborate. Because you you make all these, uh, I mean, you have a huge diversity of, of videos compared to 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 what I make, um, and and you do have a lot of videos that I would kind of almost qual qualify as pure pure entertainment. 
Um, although to be fairly honest, I don't necessarily watch them because they tend to be a bit long. <laughs> and I'm more interested in like the sciencey ones. <laughs> and and I wonder like how how does one find this balance between making education videos and, and entertainment videos? Um, because I I personally find that I really struggle with the the whole YouTube algorithm thing and and yet if I only make pure science fact videos they get no views like the videos that get the most views for me are the ones that are you know the life and day in the life of a marine biologist or this kind of stuff um and so and so i know what i need to do to get more views but i don't know if i want to do that right um and, and this is where this is i find that really interesting because um i i haven't i haven't taken the dive yet into making things that I don't know that that are maybe a bit more entertainment related um and and I don't know like how do you what what are your your thoughts on that like do you feel like you're making this because you want to make it or is it also because it helps you get more people to the channel or do you know these will be more advertised on YouTube than other pure science fact videos like it's I don't know I find it a uh, I struggled that a lot on YouTube. Um. So um, for me, uh, it, it really depends, I think, on what your end goal is. For me, my end goal is really to share, this is, might sound tacky, but it's true, is share my passion for the ocean and marine life. And I try to, <laughs> and I try to think what's the best way to do that, right. and that people will hop on board. Mm -hmm. um, and that sometimes means I have to not be so sciencey because that might spook away people who in principle are not interested in anyway. So you have to be entertaining and bits by bits, people will maybe start becoming interested in what you have to say from a scientific perspective because you're entertaining them at the same time. And bits by bits, they maybe start, you start contagiing them with your love for science and for the ocean. And that's what I think about when I do, for example, my Subnautica videos, which I 100% know are videos that will have a lot of views compared to any other video now that I put on my channel. It's, it's so not that I don't, I was so, I love doing those videos though. Yeah. I, it's fun. It's fun and it's relatively easy because I don't have to script anything. Um, I don't have to think how angles to film or I just need to play. And then what takes longer is the editing, but it's still quite fun. Um, so I know a lot of people will tune in to watch Subnautica and I just expect that at the same time, um, after uh, that, some people who are only here for Subnautica, I know there's people who are only here for the gameplays and will not watch anything else. But I know from those people that come from Subnautica will end up watching some of my videos as well. So what, because, so it's both entertaining for me to play and I know it's going to bring people to my channel. Um, well, I'm, well, I completely, uh, so wait, so it's, it's kind of both. I like doing them. But I also do a lot of them because I know it will bring people to my channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Interesting. So it's a bit of a combination. But I don't want to be known as a gamer, right, for example. Yeah. So I make it. So that's why I, now I'm trying to make one video game, one non-video game video, which I know will have much less views. But that's what I ultimately, I mean, the video game is going to end, so I cannot do that for, forever. Um, oh my goodness, I just checked. You have like 53, 40, 86, 288,000 views on Subnautica. I understand what you mean yeah. by like, yeah, it's, it's insane. insane. And that's the, like, yeah, that's why I wanted to touch on that because I, I, I was really surprised to see the number of views that these videos were getting super quickly. And all of a sudden I was like, well, it, 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 it yeah, it's interesting because it also, it's also like, as you say, like the people who watch these videos are not necessarily going to watch the other ones. So it's almost like you suddenly end up having uh, an audience that is that is divided. Like you've got a bunch of people that you know will watch that when you put them out. And then you've got another bunch of people that follow you and, you know, will watch your other stuff when, when that's coming out. 
and um, and I, I yeah I mean I don't I, I find it interesting that you're able to juggle with these different styles of videos and and Kat and, and Telly you also have like kind of more fact based and more entertainment based stuff but I find that like me the entertainment based stuff are more related to what's going on in your personal life and vlog here or trip there or travel there um, but again it's also like it's also a balance right and and how do you find you know how do you find that that balance works for you like is it do you find that these videos tend to get more views as well and that you might be more tempted to make that as opposed to pure science fact videos for me it's actually the opposite way around so my travel vlogs that i do actually get the least amount of views um we but i love them. making them they're my favorite videos to make because yeah. i get to relive my travel experience so i just exactly. make them and i just put them up and i know they're not going to get enjoy views, but <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it's actually also for me that i can go back to it like you know years later and be like oh yeah i remember that trip that was super cool so that's kind of why i make those and for some people they're interesting and that kind of stuff but then what i find gets the most views for me specifically a lot about the academia side of things so like how to write a scientific paper or how to read a scientific paper those sorts of videos actually for me get the most so even though that's not necessarily marine biology related it's still in the world of being a scientist so for some reason those seem to get the most views for me that's very interesting Kat which 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 are the videos that get the most views for you uh, advice to new divers which in, in a way like, like makes perfect sense well, it's, there's two videos. So I, I struggle with, because I made a video about um, not washing my hair. You guys might have seen it. I, yes, I, didn't, I, you know, I, I didn't use shampoo for about three years. Wait, quick, and, quick, um, do, you, do you wash your hair now or <laughs> with shampoo? Or? No, I do. Just, just because I live in 45 degree heat. I cannot, oh. <laughs> like, I just cannot handle anything. And I'm not in the ocean near enough, uh, often enough. But when I worked in the ocean all the time, the balance worked really well. So I shared this experience and that's like my most viewed video. It's got like a hundred thousand. I don't, I don't, I don't check the numbers, but I know it's ridiculous. And then the other ones, which people really want to see is dive advice. And honestly, what I do, uh, Maureen is I ask my audience and because right. I have no idea, I have no idea what videos they want to see what's going to get good views. Sometimes I put in so much effort into one, nothing happens. Other times I like throw something together and it, you know, gets 10,000 views straight away. So I'm like, who knows? So I try and ask my audience, like, what do you guys want to see? Like, what can I help you with? I have a random range of skills that I'd love to share. So just tell yeah. me if you want to hear about any of this stuff. So I find those work quite well. And then as Maria was saying, those are unscripted. Uh, or like, you know, I have a very basic outline of what I want to talk about and I get to share my, my knowledge of diving or, you know, my experiences and I get to help people. Um, and they're quite easy to film because, you know, it's just one setup and then some B-roll. Um, well, travel vlogs, my favorite to film, but like, no one really cares. But again, they're for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're, they're for my memories as well. And, um, but <laughs> That's interesting. I, I find that to be a really interesting approach to, you know, ask the audience what, what they want to see, because in, in mm. my mind, I'm almost, I'm, I'm on YouTube to, um, kind of to show the audience what I want to tell them. Right. Um, and, and I, in a way, I don't really, it's going to sound really bad. Um, but I, I don't know how much I care about what they want to see in the sense mm. that, uh, I haven't really defined the audience, right? And and again, that's something that I think you should go into YouTube with like an audience in mind. And and I don't know what my my audience is is at this point because again, like it's, it's also I don't make that many videos these days, so that's a problem. But but um, the thing is, like if if they were telling me, like if I was asking and they were telling me, I have had some recommendations, like when I made the plastic videos, for example, someone said, you should do a video about your daily, <laughs> your daily cosmetic routine. Um, and, you know, show us how, what kind of products you're using that have no plastic in them or whatever. And it was just like, 
Well, first of all, I have no daily cosmetic routine. Right. It's very basic. It's like, oops, Dang. some water. <laughs> so that's pretty much it. And and then and second, I was like, even if I did have something interesting to show, I I don't want. I don't care about showing that, right? And um and I and I know for a fact that if I had made that video, it would have had a lot of views, right? Because people like these kind of of cosmetic daily routines or stuff um and so it, like again i was kind of like that's not what i want to talk about so i'm not going to make the, that video right uh, but i do understand perfectly the place of being in like you know what especially if you have a well-established audience that has been following you for several years like what is it that you're actually interested in and that i can that i can talk about and show you and and so yeah um it's interesting to me because it does seem like you girls have very different types of audience. Yeah, Maria, do you want to say something? <laughs> yes, uh, because uh, I think it. I think you shouldn't do videos that you don't want to do. I think that's yeah. like a, a recipe for, I wouldn't burnout. say disaster, <laughs> but for burnout. burnout and just not yeah. enjoying it. Uh, so I really think that if you don't want to do, don't do them. Yeah. I, the videos yeah. I do, I enjoy making them. Uh, so it's it's. I totally think you do it the right way but there's a lot of there's two things there's the mm -hmm. luck and randomness factor uh included in how youtube suggests videos and how it picks up videos but also the damn thing that i'm always hearing but i've realized that it's true which is consistency if you don't upload right. one video every week or every two weeks you immediately see a drop in how much youtube suggests your videos that's your so, thing yeah yeah, I don't know. I, I did every week for five years. This is the first, if you would have noticed, I've taken a break for about a month off my channel. It's my first break in five years. My dad and realized it. <laughs> my dad watches your channel. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so sweet. <laughs> oh my goodness. What is Kat like, doing? Why is she not up there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people message me like, are you okay? I'm like, I don't, I don't know who I am. What is happening? What is this year? That's right. Anyone else feeling like that? <laughs> yeah. So, so to to go back to this, I, I think this is really interesting actually because it kind of uh, to me it makes me think about the question of, you know, speaking of science communication, for example, like who are we doing science communication for? And in in a way, Telly, like it, I feel like a lot of your audience might already be people who are in academia because you, you're saying that a lot of the videos that people watch from your channel tend to be like PhD related and advice on how to um, I don't know how to do this or that that are related to academic stuff and and whereas you, Maria, you've got a lot of these videos that are about how to be a marine biologist or you know the the five things that you uh should do or shouldn't do if you want to be in marine biology or whatever and and uh and and to me that will strike me as like a completely different maybe younger audience who is really interested in the field um and so so it's interesting because i wonder like in terms of pure science communication when we're using our channels like this like how do we need to define which audience we are targeting these videos to? Like if I'm making a pure science fact video and I know that Telly, most of your, your audience is probably going to be people in academia and, and Maria, most of your audience is probably going to be people in, of a younger generation and Kat, I don't even know because your channel is so diverse. Like it might actually be all sorts of people like Maria's dad. Like you might have the, 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 the largest kind of audience. I got Maria's right? dad so I'm winning. <laughs> <laughs> um, Do you think mine, about these about things? Divers, people interested to get into yeah. the ocean. And Do you I don't think know, about like that? you guys will know this. Well, well yeah, because you, you guys are scuba divers as well. Scuba divers come in all shapes, sizes, ages, yeah. any sort. So um, I've, I've struggled with that while you're saying like, who is my audience? I, I don't really know. I've, and that's, that's the problem. Everyone always says to be successful, you need a niche down. You need to focus on a specific yeah, area. Yeah. And I kind of haven't. And I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like it's, it's a hard question where it's like, it's the same thing as you kind of, I share what I want to share and I, you know, hope people enjoy it and it resonates with some 
and it resonates with a whole range of people. So that works out for me, I guess, like in that sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But it's hard. What Maria and, and Talia, what do you think about like when, when you're when you're making these kind of more science science facty videos, like do you think about that audience? Do you have that in mind? And you're like, how should I tune in my my tone or my editing or the things I talk about or or you just do whatever and um, so I do what I wanna do normally. <laughs> I think that's in pretty clear now. <laughs> in terms of science videos. Um, I do try to think how to make them more engaging, but I think the problem with science like videos is one? the cookie one. <laughs> one. Oh yeah, that I was like so fun. One. That was so much fun to um, record for me. I loved recording and to that watch. One. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but for example, that one was probably one of the videos which I dedicated the most time with and has the least views. But I did it anyway. I, like, I really enjoyed it. Um, what, what was I saying? Uh, yes. Um, no, I, I, I lost my train. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries, no worries. Um, what, wait, I've completely lost my train of thought. What was I saying before? <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm still that, sleeping. Yeah, like when you're... When you're making videos, uh, science videos, you make yes, what you yes, want, yes. basically. Uh, in but, um, but I, I, I have a comment on science. I, I think one of the reasons why there's least less people. There's two reasons I think why le there's less people watching the more science videos. First, yeah. I think YouTube people come to YouTube usually to watch either very well-made science videos, like that pe those really proper, yeah. high production and science videos, or to watch people, stories about people, people reacting, just like the people really, and not so much what you're saying, but more interacting with the people. So right. for doing good science videos, I think you have to be, to only do that if you are only if you only want to, that your channel is only science videos, you have to be really good at it. Um, and I'm aware that right now, until maybe now I have more time, but during my PhD, I, I knew I didn't have the time to make really good science videos. Yeah, same. Um, so, yeah. So uh, I think it really has to do also why, why people come to YouTube. They are more, they want to connect with the people behind the screen more than anything, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's why people like watching gameplays because they feel like they're in, you know, just playing a game with a friend or why people like watching reaction videos because they feel like like watching a, vi a movie with the right, right. with a friend. I think it's maybe just because of the nature of YouTube that people watch less of the science videos, but I don't know. It's yeah. this is just I also think a lot about this. Um but yeah. I don't this is what I I think maybe it's it's yeah. a very good point yeah yeah so for me I don't actually do a much much like proper science videos but if I do I try and um, as you said Maria you have to have that like personal collect connection so I do it with stuff that is relevant to me and my audience so for example a lot of people will know that I study sharks and rays so then I spoke about the shark COVID vaccine for example right. and that sort of thing so trying to be educational but also link it back to you and your interests and getting that personal connection that way yeah yeah I yeah. think that's a good yeah, it, it's very interesting as well because I uh, I find that I started making a, a YouTube channel with that that in mind, like with the idea that I wanted people to be able to connect with a real person who happens to be a marine biologist, and and then I lose track at times because when I make videos that are just that, like the the day in the life of a biologist or whatever, um, there's no science fact per se right and so i'm thinking well what's the what's the value of these videos are people just completely and like are they just entertained and there's nothing else to it or are they I, learning something and that's yeah maria what do you think i think there's that? i think there's immense value in that actually mm -hmm. i think in in several perspectives first of all seeing a, a female scientist do uh, working uh, in science that's already like a uh, super valuable then seeing how passionate you are about your work, that's contagious. And that can make other people interested in what you are doing. And if they, 
are interested in you, they, you, they ha- will be interested in listening what you have to say in other regards as well. So yeah. I think those videos are very valuable. I think maybe, maybe even more so than just pure scientific yeah. videos sometimes in terms of long lasting effects on your audience. Yeah. Um, I can tell you uh, from my, when I was a kid, um, like I was inspired by TV shows where the, there was no science communication. Like they didn't spew out science. It was just characters living their life being marine biologists. Those were the people or the things in my childhood that stuck the most with me and that uh, helped me more rather than really just pure science. That's true. That's very true. Yeah. Mm. That's so... And and like, then, sorry, Chantal? Sorry, Kat. <laughs> I, I mean, like, science facts, let's be honest, that's, that's what they're teaching in schools. That's what is like, you know, in the textbooks, there's so many resources for that. And I feel like, as, as Mario was saying, YouTube is largely about entertainment as well. So it's, it's about mixing the two. And yeah, yeah, I would rather watch a video seeing what your day is like, like that teaches me more about you and about your job than you know, a, a pure fact about sharks or, or plastic or anything. Yeah. And yeah, I, anyway, that's, that's what I think. <laughs> what, what do you want to say, Telly? Yeah, I was going to say something similar. Like we know there are these huge YouTube channels with really high production value to them. And they do all these science, commu- like proper science videos. Um, and so we know all of that information is out there. Um, so yeah, having that human connection and also because a lot of people, even in my family, I tell them I'm a marine biologist and they have no idea yeah, what yeah. I do, what my day is like, yeah. what is the life of a scientist like? I mean, most, and then a lot of the comments and questions I get are, you know, I want to spend all my days outdoors. Should I become a marine biologist? Well, no. <laughs> because no. A lot of people do you like a computer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a lot of people associate that with being a marine biologist but that's not necessarily mm. the case so like pulling back the curtain and showing people what really being a marine biologist is like yeah, yeah. i think it's that's so interesting i feel like i'm having a therapy session right now <laughs> all of a sudden i'm like oh, of course this is what it's about but, uh, now i remember can you say something yeah. marine i think there's a huge audience for the type of content you put out I yeah. think the only reason why you don't have more people watching <laughs> is because you don't post every week. Yeah, I know that. I, I, I post uh, every uh, six months if I'm productive. <laughs> your videos are super yeah. well made and I think there's a th- there would be audience for them, for sure. I'm really not just saying that. I think it's just because YouTube has this weird way of suggesting yeah, videos. Yeah. And the more videos, and you don't have that many videos, so YouTube is still suspicious about you. So the more videos you put out, <laughs> it's also more likely I am to, a suspicious to looking you. person. <laughs> 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 no, but it's really interesting to get your, your, your input on that, because I think that if there's anyone out there who's interested in starting a YouTube channel or... I mean, starting a YouTube channel. I think there's a lot of people who are interested in starting a YouTube channel and yeah. just don't because they, they can't define exactly why. And so I think that that conversation is really interesting because it does help even me who's thought about this a lot. Like it helps me remember why I'm doing this. So um, yeah, thanks for the but awesome But it's also input. okay for it to change and evolve. Yes. And as I said, it's been five, five five years what am I doing with my life Um, (laughs) and I know my content's definitely changed a lot and I know my audience some of them have grown with me and I have gained new people and it's just this yeah yeah you, you have to do what you really want and I think that's why I've taken a break is like I need to come back to the start because I was doing you know what what Maria was saying I was making sure I was really consistent and um it was, it was getting a little disheartening, you know, and a lot of the things I really cared about and put a lot of effort in was yeah. just not, I was not getting the feedback I, yeah. I wanted, I guess, or expected. Not that, you know, you, that's also the thing you can't expect and you have to do it because you love it. So that's why yeah. I think I love watching Maria's videos so much. Not that I don't love your, your guys' <laughs> too, but like you can tell. We she, all love Maria's channel. Really just, she just she just fills it because she wants to. Yeah. She's like, this is what yeah. I'm doing today. I'm baking cookies. <laughs> it's awesome. 
do so, it this way you might <laughs> actually that, that that's leading me to to another kind of related question which is how um has you know this affected your life like being a youtuber and and uh and having this channel like is or how is it affecting your life currently like is this doing anything to you or is it just another <laughs> time consuming uh, I, activity. I, I get to work I get to work with amazing companies. Like hands down, I get to work with the biggest dive store in Australia. I get to review their equipment. That's I get awesome. to share my opinions on it. And uh, you know, it, it opens a lot of doors weirdly. I like I can text anyone or on Instagram anyone like, hi, That's I have true. a podcast. Yes. Do you want to talk to me? And they're like, sure. I'm like <laughs> who am I? And I'm yeah. talking to some of the most incredible people across the world scientists who have 20 30 years of experience and i'm like yeah sure i know i know what's happening so i i love that it's it, the science has allowed me to just like communicate and it's just this amazing network of people and it's really yeah. opened that like flow i think that's well, I really guys, interesting that's a massive thing yeah has it also opened... probably one <laughs> um I think because I haven't really, so my li my YouTube life is like, I film, my edit, I post it and that's a bit it. So I, but it's because I just have no time. So I didn't really reach out much to people, which I, I follow a lot of people, but I don't, I rarely reach out to people. Um, so my YouTube, so I, you got, yeah, I was, not, <laughs> I think you were, Kat uh, contacted me, then we contact. So I was, so I'm super happy. Um, but now I'm uh, to meet, to have met you guys. But I feel like until now, I really felt like I had two lives. Was my YouTube life that I film, edit, post, and at the end, and then I go back to my normal life, PhD life, where I'm just all into that. That's what I feel um, like too, yeah. So I, I feel like it didn't really, they didn't really combine. It's very weird. I cannot explain. But I hope it changes now because I am now wanting to go yeah. into science communication. So I'm going to start and trying to make YouTube also part of my working bubble, like expand it and all everything becomes one big bubble. Yeah, and if I if I if I can add to that because I think it's it's really related. Um, you know, right now, um, and for the last three months, I've been working as a consultant with with Oceana, which is an NGO that works mostly on ocean related um, topics, and they're pretty big, like they're all around the world, and one of the things that that convinced them I was the right person to hire was my YouTube channel. <laughs> like they yeah. saw, yeah, I put, I actually, and it, it's really funny because I wrote two resumes. They had two job positions. And then one resume, um, the first job position, which is the one I got, I put my YouTube channel, I put a very specific video that I particularly like, and I think it's quite professional. So I put that there and I was like, oh, look, I do science communication. And then the next resume I sent to their second position I was like oh my god this is so dumb I can't believe I did this I don't want them to see this so I removed it and then when I got the interview for the first position they were like wow your video was amazing this is great we're gonna have things like that to do this is perfect we're exactly looking for that kind of profile and I was like oh my god like <laughs> who would have thought I had no idea I was so shit you know afterwards I was like this was the silliest thing I could have done remove that from your resume right now Maureen and now I'm like oh gosh actually no I need to make more videos so it's very I think it really have, yeah. Yeah, I think we underestimate, we underestimate uh, what it yeah. means to have a channel because for us, it's just like, oh, we do it, but how many people do it? So it's something different than usually than usual. So I think people value that. Um, yeah. And, and as it's long a as set not of skills, you know, yes. like for any job position, like for anyone who might want to start a YouTube channel, if you do, the worst thing you're going to learn, like the worst case scenario, you learn how to edit and you learn how to like be more fluent in, in science communication or any sort of communication and sound and video editing. And in this day and age, that's such a key part of most jobs, <laughs> especially yeah. Yeah, ocean yeah. science things. Yeah. And working also, with you. Like, 
Yeah, it highlights commitment and passion. So, mm-hmm. you know, you're not just doing what you have to do in your job. You're actually going yeah. further and beyond and you are trying to communicate and reach out to people. And it shows that you are passionate and, and you, you, you do want to put yourself out there. As we've said, all of us kind of feel this terrible shame sometimes, <laughs> but we still do it. We still put ourselves out there. And that just shows that's commitment a very and passion. Good thing. Yeah, that's a, that's a really, really good point. I think it's easy to forget that as well. Yeah. Well, um, I, I don't want to keep you ladies for, for much longer, but I think I can, I'll can. i just finish with a last kind of question, I guess. And Maria, you already touched on that a bit. But um, it is like science communication or, or being some sort of, of a social media influencer or what, whatever, something you, you see as a career or, or as something that will continue in parallel to your professional life? How, what's the future of your, of your channels and your science communication skills? Uh, okay, I can start. Um, I don't know. I was like, who goes, who goes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is this trick question? <laughs> it's tough. Um, I trick. definitely, I would definitely consider us a um, career in science communication, but obviously I, if I, continue i do not want to just be playing video games i want to up <laughs> my game yeah uh i would love hey. which yeah, yeah. You <laughs> i'm, I'm the games i can you <laughs> can <be a laughs> software <laughs> developer you the marine biologist <laughs> retired as an co- advisor biology yeah. <laughs> i mean i'm sure no, they hire a marine biologist for this stuff I don't think so. <laughs> I would love to be a consultant on movies. They need my help. Let's just put yeah. it that Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You'd please. actually get a good shark movie for a change if they consulted people. <laughs> yes. Hmm. They're not interested in that, though. <laughs> so you see yourself uh, going in that direction if, if the yes. floor is open? But it doesn't need to be like influencer. It can be... my uh, Really, my ultimate goal is to put it in easy words, help the ocean. So just um, get people again uh, passionate about it and just hopefully help some people change their views or not change, but sometimes sometimes people need to be reminded of how much they like something too, you know? It's not only about convincing others to like it. It's also about reminding people why they like it. I love watching documentaries because Oh yes, I love that. I forgot. I actually yeah. really like it. So, yeah, I would love to. I'm uh, trying to learn more about filmmaking. I've been doing some courses online, um, yes. and I would love to start making more uh, documentary style vlogs. So not only just me holding the camera, but I already did one. I tried yeah, like a yeah, one of your latest uh, one. It was very yes, very nicely edited. Yeah. Yeah. Try to do more of those, uh, like, and hopefully getting better and better. I loved making that video, like thinking uh, about one? camera. Uh, it's called snorkeling in winter. Oh yeah. I haven't had a chance to check it it's out. Really nice. yeah, so, yeah. so different camera angles, uh, thinking about, you know, doing color grading and color correcting, which I hadn't done on my videos until now, all these kind of things. So I, but well, I'm kind of, swimming in every direction now i'm not 100 percent sure yet exactly what i want to do but i'm investing in science communication i'm starting a port a pot a podcast in portuguese because Ooh, there yay. is oh, you are. nothing yes there is nothing which i'm so surprised i mean brazil has a huge coast portugal has a huge coast you have cape verde mozambique and there's nothing in terms of science communication, like podcasts or YouTube channels in Portuguese. It's insane. And I was very surprised. Such a good idea to, to, you know, if you find that there's there's potential for something like that and it just doesn't exist, that's, yeah. that's an opportunity to grab right there. And it's amazing. Like, you could do so much with something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I have projects in mind we'll see i have no idea what i'm doing that's the <laughs> ultimate answer <laughs> what about you girls <laughs> i'm trying to upskill i i got myself uh, adobe premiere pro the other day because oh. before that i was that's just what I used. Sticking, 
It's yeah, awesome. I was just sticking with like the usual Apple iMovie or whatever it was, which is good to like kind of get started in because it's super easy to use. But I was finding that the things that I wanted to do that I just couldn't do with that software. So I was like, okay, let me let me take the plunge and try and do Premiere uh, Pro. Premiere is a steep learning curve. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. So I'm kind of, as you said, Maria, like you try and, you know, do just something more every video. So like the last video I played with transitions and then the next video I'll maybe play with color grading. So you just like learn slowly but yeah, surely yeah. as you come along. <laughs> and do you see yourself continuing to make videos alongside your, your career? Because you do have a job that is not making videos, right? <laughs> yeah, so I'm a postdoc at the moment and I still have like just over two years uh, contract to do that. Um, so I really want to carry on. I want to, the, you know, at the moment do it in parallel with my job. And then when that comes to an end, I don't know, maybe, me to have it take more of a center stage, maybe concentrate more on it. I'm not 100% sure, but I do know that whatever happens, I do want to carry on. Right. Yeah. 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 What about you, Kat? I would, I would love if this could be my full time job. Oh, and yeah. it, <laughs> it awesome. kind of has been for, it was my full time job for about a year and a half or something. Uh, but in terms of where I'm in my life, I'll just have to see how it goes. But I really love the podcast and the opportunity to, to talk to marine experts throughout the world. And it really helps me stay motivated. Like you guys are saying, like watching documentaries, it reminds you why you love something. And talking to people who are as passionate, if not more passionate than me about the ocean and yeah. why they want to protect it just helps me keep going. Because it's, I find it quite easy to get discouraged I don't know if it's just this whole year that's just been insane or I don't know what but same thing with videos like I'm, I'm trying to upskill as well I've been taking some video courses my dream is to to work on documentaries and things but unfortunately the reality is there's so many amazing talented people working on it already especially here in Australia where yeah. it's yeah. quite a saturated market and unless I live in a very ocean like front zone like i live in an incredible place but not for footage like i see humpback whales and manta rays and everything all the time but the water is a bit green so it's like it's just not it's not documentary level mm -hmm. um so i'd love to i'd love to continue working that but worst case scenario you know i'm um, i'm thinking of applying for like environmental scientist jobs and to <laughs> getting real job, but still within the field, <laughs> still yeah. within the field. Um, because I, I do really love, you know, learning and I love science and I've been working as a teacher now for a year. So I love teaching as well. I'm just a massive nerd. So like, just, <laughs> just whatever, whatever uh, I'll be doing, I'll be learning or teaching. <laughs> so I'm just going to be kind Amen. of, Amen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. That's awesome. What about you, Maureen? Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, gosh, what a question. I mean, I think, you know, what, what you girls were saying about the fact that making these videos can be inspiring in terms of showing, you know, who is doing what, that, that there's a woman out there that's doing some marine biology on some cool boats and having some crazy adventures, like, um, I, I could definitely see myself doing that for quite a bit more because I tend to do some really cool stuff and yeah. I feel sorry not to share it. I, you know, I want to be like, look, this is what you can do. Um, Film it, do it. We yeah, want to see. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So I don't see myself doing that uh, full time per se, because I think I would really miss the science or the research. And because also to me, what I want to convey in the, in the channel is that you is is precisely what I'm doing as a researcher, right? It, it's not, mm -hmm. it, and so it's interesting because, um, yeah, I, I don't think I would be a, I would see myself as a 100% science communicator. But who knows? Who knows what the future holds for us? <laughs> uh, interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah. But uh, thank you so much, girls. That was an amazing chat. Really, thank you. Thank you. I would just like to say that all three of you inspire me so much. And it Same. To <laughs> stop it. <laughs> yeah. It goes, I think it goes all, all the way. Oh, yeah. I, I love, I love these chats and I wish we did them more. We have to do the podcast chat soon. Just 
Yeah. Because as I'm saying, it just helps stay motivated and like on, on mission, you know? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I think it's super important to have a community within like this. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Or science communication sphere. I love it. And I, and I, I do, do find like one more thing maybe is that I have, I have seen occasionally some resistance to it. Like some people who tell me things like, oh, I would never be able to do that because I can't film myself or I'm not self-centered enough. Someone told me that once. And I was like, I don't know if that's what it's about. I don't feel like a particularly self-centered person, but now that you mention it, oh my God. <laughs> and, and uh, You don't need to... Yeah. Mm, and sorry. sometimes sorry. I, found, I feel a bit alone because it's not, there's not a lot of people who are willing to make a fool out of themselves because that's really what you feel like sometimes because they fear for their image and their career and their credibility and I just don't think about it. I yeah. like upload it and then I'm like, that's it. I'm not. Yeah. So it's <laughs> nice, I don't watch it again. Nice to meet courageous <laughs> ladies who have just made that jump and who are out there <laughs> making some cool videos. Not Honestly, crazy. I'll just go back to what I said. I mean, if someone judges you because you try to share something in the internet that you're passionate about, even if you're silly, I mean, yeah, then, I don't know what to say to that person, really. That's on them, yeah. Yeah, that's on them. Because uh, being silly is... Gr I mean, everyone should be silly until forever. Why? I mean, <laughs> having the real... Like, this idea that you as a scientist... <laughs> <laughs> this idea that as a scientist, you have to be this very poised, serious person. That's why people are driven away from science in the first place sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I think... Um, I tell this, I mean, I'm still embarrassed sometimes, so, but I tell myself <laughs> this, so rationally I know all this, but I still have to fight over the, I don't do anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Feeling sometimes. I, I became more excited. There's no rational sense to. I have a friend, when I, when I started my PhD, I've, I met someone, a colleague who, you know, found my channel and I was really embarrassed. And he was like, why are you embarrassed of doing this, Marine? And I was like, oh, because, you know, I'm not doing it for you. And he was like, if you're going to do this, Marine, you need to embrace it. Otherwise, yes. do it. And I was like, whoa, this is like on point. Okay. Yes. So from now on, every time I make a video, I put it everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's uh, definitely sometimes you... And I, I mean, I am about being self-centered. Like, I don't think you have to be self-centered, but you definitely have to be okay with looking at yourself for a very long yeah. time yeah and hear all yourself <laughs> <laughs> yes in the beginning was weird but now i you mean maybe for some people that's considered self-centered but i mean yeah. i don't care you get used to it i don't know like, if someone tells me that i mean i mean the more what? you see yourself and, and edit the more you're like oh i've seen this before and it's just whatever like it's like actually watching someone else no, yeah. I still cringe at myself sometimes. I have to <laughs> say that sometimes when I'm editing, yeah. I, still, I, I feel my body doing this, especially <laughs> with my English. Like I say such <laughs> things and I'm like, even as a ah. English teacher, I also constantly make mistakes all the time. So. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> That's when you have these big, big Zoom moments in your video, Maria. <laughs> yeah. and I'm like that's when Maria's like oh no did I really say this okay yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right yeah, guys, thank you so much for, for this thank you so much um if uh, yeah I mean uh I suggest everyone watching this to go and visit each each of your channels because they're just amazing and they're also very diverse and that's what's interesting is that you're you're I mean, we're all talking about marine stuff, but in the end, um, I'm the only marine. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but in the end, <laughs> we're, we're also talking about very different things. So, yeah, just check out these girls' um, channels because they're amazing. And they're what inspired me to have a channel in the first place. So, thank you, girls. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Bye. Yeah.